Ever since mankind thought its first thought, mysteries of the universe and questions that would linger on the minds of so many have been studied and pondered in the hopes that one day, they would be answered. This is one of those days. We're going to be taking a look at this iceberg, which has no title, no category, because it's just... It's the strangest iceberg I've ever looked at. I don't quite remember how I found it, but it's been sitting on my phone for almost a year now and I thought it was time to bring it out and show it to the world. As we can clearly see, some of life's biggest mysteries are on this iceberg and I'm here to answer them. So sit back and relax as I take you through the strangest iceberg I've ever looked at. These first two entries are kind of serious and political, so we should probably get them out of the way real quick. Trump bad. People thought Trump bad because of what he did or didn't do as the 45th president of the United States, and because of his past. There were also a lot of jokes aimed towards him. Opinions on loving him, hating him, or feeling indifferent about him differ from person to person. But I think we can all agree that he would look pretty baller rocking this look. 9-11. This was a tragic event that happened on American soil during September 11, 2001. I'm pretty sure we all know what happened that day. I can't really show anything or say too much because if I do, YouTube will falsely flag me under violent criminal organizations. Now that's all of that talked about, so let's move on to Taco Friday. You thought Taco Tuesday was what's up? No, 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 no. Taco Friday is where it's at. It's actually a popular day in Norway, so much so that some grocery stores are rearranged to have taco ingredients near the front of the store on Fridays. Norwegians are geniuses for eating tacos on Friday. Friday is the end of the working week, so why not get social and have a great time with dinner? You can easily make a taco spread with meats and vegetables for family and or friends. Apparently, Sweden has Taco Friday too, and they put cucumbers, peanuts, and pineapples on their tacos. Now that's something. Sounds tasty nonetheless. Have any of you participated in Taco Friday? If so, comment it down below. I'd be curious to hear about it. Hold on. Does pineapple belong on tacos? Let's kick this layer off with, zoo is bad. Even though it's awesome to go to the zoo and see all of these cool animals, it can be a harsh place for those animals. Suffering in captivity, being taken away from their natural habitats, killed for being considered useless, and being tortured to perform tricks are just some of the things that can happen to an animal at a zoo. Of course, what happens to an animal and the severity of anything bad that happens to it depends on the zoo. A lot of zoos do help to give animals better lives while providing education and entertainment to the public. Plus, zoos can be used for conservation efforts to keep certain species from dying out as well. Wombat Crisis Sadly, wombats are classified as an endangered species. For those of you who don't know what a wombat is, they're small marsupials that are native to Australia. There are only three species of them that aren't extinct, and they're part of the Wombatidae family. What's cool is that they love to dig long burrow systems with their claws and teeth. These burrows can go on for meters and they also give shelter to animals in need of a home during bushfires. Even though that last part is unintentional, they're still a 10 out of 10 animal. Just don't piss it off because it can run at speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour. That's almost 25 miles for all of you using the Stone Age Imperial system. Naruto wrote the Bible. Come on, you know it's true. Who else could have done it? Oh my god, you know what this entry reminds me of? It reminds me of that what if, the uh, I think it was how Naruto should end. Uh, it was some sort of post. It reads like this. It's the last panel and it pans away from all of the characters standing together. Then the manga closes and you see Josuke was just reading Naruto the whole time and it was just a manga in the JJBA world. 
<laughs> Josuke looks up at Rohan and says, Dude, this fucking sucks. You suck at making manga. Okay, um, going, going back on topic, Naruto is the only being powerful enough to write the Bible, the piece of literature that has shaped the lives of billions of people. Don't believe me? Okay. 1 plus 1 equals 3. An absolute mad lad has done it, fresh fruit art. Not even Ray William Johnson could figure this one out. Here's how they did it. Assume A equals B. Multiply both sides by B. Subtract both sides by a square. Factorize both sides. Simplify both sides. Add both sides with 1. Because A equals B, we get this. Now assume A equals 1. And then, baba boom. There it is. But this goes deeper. What it can truly represent is two things combining to make a third. For example, Two people f- oh, two people frick, a child can be the result. You have one color, mix it with another, you get a third. Naruto is chillin', he grabs a pen. The Bible is written. The history of the universe <sighs> brings a tear to my eye, it's beautiful. CSGO is a PSYOP. A PSYOP, aka a psychological operation, is an operation usually aimed at influencing an individual's or a population's state of mind through non-combative means. Now if this was the case, how would the game do this? Playing CSGO at the highest level requires insane reflexes, timing, communication, and game knowledge regarding maps, guns, gun recoil, lines of sight, and equipment. To get to that level, you have to play the game a lot and get better at it. Once you've done that, your state of mind has changed. You're faster, always on the ready. But why do all of this? For the military, you're a global elite, status, gamer. And you get a knock on the door from them. And then, you join their top secret gamer squad, willingly or unwillingly. Keck is real. Keck is the deification of the concept of primordial darkness in the ancient Egyptian Ogdoad cosmogony of Hermopolis. So, there were eight deities in this Ogdoad, four males and four females, with each deity being paired with another one of a different sex. Keck is a lady and her man counterpart is Korket. And who were the other deity beings? Uh, some sort of Keks too? Or... Something? Some of them were depicted with frog heads, so... There's some Pepe the Frog symbolism. We all know who this frog is. He's associated with the term Kek, which is like saying LOL. The Egyptian Kek symbolism and modern Kek symbolism have some pretty strange similarities, probably because modern Kek is inspired by the Egyptian. So is Kek real? I suppose so. QAnon is a fanfic. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Here we go. So, QAnon is a movement. Here's a quote about it from a QAnon WordPress site. <clears throat> Tis far easier to blame socialists from Europe, homegrown elitists, power-hungry bureaucrats, or even a sinister secret conspiracy for centralizing government over the past century. And then it goes on about federalism, uh, being about control, etc. There's also a lot of stuff about Satanism, cannibals, people that do bad things to kids, global trafficking rings, and people who conspired against Donald Trump. This all started because of a 4chan post of someone claiming to have information who went under the name Q. This person or people have been posting information for years now, and their influence has spread worldwide. Japan calls it Jayanon. <laughs> Why? Q also claims to be a high-level government official with Q clearance, which is basically a clearance that allows someone to access a lot of restricted and top-secret data. Now that we've gone through some of the context and history, this entry suggests that it's all a fanfiction. If that were revealed to be the case, it would be pretty funny in my opinion. All of this build-up just for a little trolling. If this were to be a fanfiction, could it hurry up and get to the climax already? There's so much filler and plot points that feel like they're going nowhere at the moment. Mm. 
Mouths should be spelt as mouths. Mm-hmm. You know, before writing this part of the script, I sat at my desk saying mouths and mouths for 5 to 10 minutes to crack this one and I think I got it. It seems easier to say mouths instead of mouths. I think that's because mouths requires more mouth movement. I don't know how else to explain it, mouths just seems easier to say. Let me give you an example, so I put the dog water into the mouths of many, versus I put the dog water into the mouths of many. It just rolls off the tongue easier, it makes the sentence so much smoother. Plus, I'm pretty damn sure that I have a slight lisp, and saying mouths instead of mouths sort of eliminates that. I am now convinced that V is king over TH. Drake is CIA. World famous rapper Drake is CIA. Source? Bro, just trust me. I, um, don't really know what else to, to say. Um. <laughs> this smiley face over that smiley face. Blasphemy! But hold on. Maybe this iceberg entry is onto something. No. You know that feeling of looking at something familiar, yet not at the same time? That's what I'm feeling right now. It's so dirty. We read left to right, up to down. Not this! Although, pair this face and this face, and it looks like two very polite people having a conversation. So as a pair, they look fantastic. But by itself? No. Alrighty, what's next? Who smelt it, dealt it, slash, you eat 80 spiders a day. Oh, Someone may bring attention to or complain about a fart that can be smelt. In a lot of cases, the person bringing up the fart is trying to pretend that they didn't do it. So in court or on the streets, a citizen can use the term whoever smelt it, dealt it as a defense against someone suspected of brapping hard. However, someone could use the whoever smelt it delta defense to make sure people never question them on if they farted. It's a very intricate and complex mind game that people play willingly or unwillingly. Do you stay silent and let everyone else take control of the conversation? Do you join in with the mob and accuse someone of farting? Or do you defend someone or yourself from accusations? If you were to defend yourself or someone else, Here's some comebacks you can use against whoever smelt it, dealt it. Whoever denied it, supplied it. A classic. He who articulated it, particulated it. Nice. He who rejected it, ejected it. <laughs> oh my god, this entry's been an Among Us reference the whole time. Now sussy balls aside, eating 80 spiders a day, it's so true. It just makes sense. What happens is that you eat some spiders throughout the day and night because they crawl on you, then into your mouth, and then into your stomach where they perish. Have you ever woken up in the morning and not been hungry? Well, you ate some pretty big spiders during the night. Even in the daytime, if you've been full for a while or don't really feel like eating during a key meal time, then congratulations, you've filled up on spiders. We've got some pretty wild spiders down here in Australia. White tails, Black spiders, funnel webs, mouse spiders, red back spiders, tarantulas, trapdoors, wolf spiders, and my favorites, daddy long legs and huntsmen. Why do I like them so much? Because they're friends. Daddy long legs are found all throughout Australian houses and sheds. They'll usually just sit there in their webs and catch insects for you that get in your property, so that's pretty neat. They're also big babies, so you can pick them up with a low chance of being bitten and take them outside if you don't want them where they are. They also make for good mothers, carrying their egg sacs around and hanging with their young for about a year. Huntsmen are also good mothers, except they don't make webs and they're really timid and fast. They usually won't bite, but don't mess with a female one protecting its young. They also look like crabs. My uncle has a few pet spiders too. I've seen him and other family members pick some of them up and hold them. As long as you're calm and don't make crazed movements, spiders are pretty chill. 
But obviously, some species are very dangerous and should not be touched, so stay safe. Anyway, my uncle recommended that I hold a tarantula, but no, I opted for holding one of the giant cockroaches he owns. It hissed at me. Big feet is real. Bigfoot, aka a Sasquatch, is an ape-like creature that is reported to live in the forests of North America. Attempting to prove the existence of this creature has been happening for years, especially by those interested in cryptozoology, a pseudoscience and subculture that aims to prove the existence of creatures like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, etc. We've all seen image after image of Bigfoot sightings and this entry suggests that Big Feet is real. So, more than one Bigfoot? If there were Big Feet out there, wouldn't they have all been found by now? There's only so many hiding places a giant ape-like figure can hide before authorities find it and identify it as a Bigfoot. I'm trying to get into the mindset of someone who believes in Bigfoot. I feel like they would really want lots of Big Feet or just one Bigfoot to be real, right? So, they might fake a Bigfoot sighting to get people on their side or grasp at straws to keep their dreams alive. All in all, do you believe in Big Feet? Will you be keeping it squatchy? Is anyone still watching this? We've made it to the final layer and final entry. Shoulder checking baby mammoths. A shoulder check is the act of turning your head quickly to the left or right to look out of your side window. Also called a head check, this helps you to see what's in your blind spots while driving. It's also an act of aggression people do by bumping their shoulders into someone. What does this have to do with baby mammoths? I get that this is a joke iceberg, but is this really how it ends? <gasps> we get to the end and we're given an entry so powerful and so intellectual that our minds cannot even fathom it. But all I know is that I'll be doing shoulder checks to see if I can find a baby mammoth in my blind spot and I'll definitely deck a baby mammoth with my shoulder given the chance. And I hope you all do too. This was the strangest iceberg I've ever looked at, conquered, and I'm sure this is now the strangest iceberg you've ever looked at too. It was definitely an interesting iceberg to cover, to say the least. And hey, this was the shortest iceberg video I've made so far. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and let me know what you thought of it in the comments section. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content, shoutouts to the notification gang, take it easy.